from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. Did you see what happened today on Wall Street? This is unbelievable. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up nearly 900 points. The Dow and the S&P 500, yeah, but have you taken a look at your 401k lately? Remember you saw it was down 35%? And guess what? It's probably down 25% now. <laughs> the Dow and the S&P 500 up almost 11%. <laughs> it's insane. The market goes up, the market goes down. The market goes down, the market goes down. The market goes way up. And uh, my guess, and I'm just some fool with a microphone, my guess is that uh, tomorrow some people are going to take whatever they were able to uh, recover with this game today. They'll sell, and the market will drop back down tomorrow. It's pretty outrageous. And it's got to be scary because um, I've talked to so many friends who have invested in their IRAs. Uh, who have 401ks at work, who have uh, 403bs if they are teachers, and there's other versions of the 401k that exist if you're some kind of a public employee. But they're all basically the same thing, and they all basically work the same way. They take money out of your paycheck before taxes are taken out. You pay less in taxes, and that money goes towards uh, investing for your retirement. And so many people have gotten scared, and I really do believe that the huge surge for Barack Obama in the last few weeks had to do with the fact that many people got that statement in the mail that said, period ending 9.30.08. <laughs> and when they opened it up, they saw they were down 33%, 35%, 37%, 40% for the year. And the year's not even over yet. Now... My advice to you guys out there is this. Uh, you just want to stay pat. If you haven't already gotten out, if you did not have the ability to see the future, which most of us don't, selling now would be a big mistake. Again, I'm not a registered financial planner or certified financial planner. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a stockbroker. I'm just a guy who's made a lot of money. And I, I have to tell you that it's my belief that um, if you sell now, you're going to miss the biggest rally of our lifetime. Because at some point, maybe as Humphrey Bogart once said, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. <laughs> no, no. I'm talking about uh, sometime between now and 2010. Uh, the market is going to have a huge rally. And if you take your retirement money out now, and especially if you're stupid enough to cash in your retirement account, that that's just crazy. That's crazy. By the way, just uh, some helpful advice from me. If you decided to sell all your mutual funds and stocks that are in your retirement account, do not withdraw the money. Leave it in, even if you leave it in a money market account or what they call a, a GIC, a government insured, I'm sorry, Guaranteed Investment Contract, GIC. Uh, leave it there. Don't take the money out. And the reason is because, number one, you'll have to pay tax on the money. And number two, there will be penalties for withdrawing the money before you are retired. You may end up taking out only half the money that you appear to have, and you already have lost 30 or 40%. So that's a huge hit you'd be taking. The worst thing you can do is withdraw all your money and, and, you know, put it in the bank or spend it. Terrible idea. I, I There are many friends I have I've had to talk out of doing that. Don't do it. 
these stories eventually get, I think, kind of fatiguing. 900 points up to the 900 points. 900 points in a day. I don't think that's ever happened before. 900 points in a day. Uh, it says here, I'm looking at it right now, it's the second largest point gain ever. The explanation, they've always got an explanation, by the way. They always think they know what this market of millions and millions of people is actually thinking. They claim today in the story that bargain hunters late in the day stormed into the market. Now they say things like there didn't appear to be any one catalyst for the surge that saw the Dow nearly double its gain in the last hour of trading. Many analysts said investors were grabbing up stocks in the belief that Wall Street had fallen too far in recent sessions. The Dow had dropped 500 points in two days. Some said buying early in the day came from anticipation of an interest rate cut on Wednesday by the Federal Reserve. That's tomorrow. And the market just followed its recent pattern of building on its gains or losses in the last minute of the session. A lot of gobbledygook, a lot of craziness going on. And uh, by the way, a reminder of why I tell you guys not to buy individual stocks, because you just don't know enough to do it. Let the professionals at your mutual fund handle this. It's a lot of money to be made when the market is volatile, trust me, because a real expert knows how to how to figure out when they're buying low and to figure out when they're selling high. You don't. I will tell you, at, at this moment, I own only one stock. And it's the stock that they give me inside my 401k. Other than that, I do not own any stocks. And I don't recommend that anybody own individual stocks. I just don't. It's that simple. Now, I know some of you are scared. I know some of you uh, see this as an opportunity. I know some of you uh, think that Wall Street is Las Vegas Boulevard, and some of you will just come with whatever cash you've got stashed in your uh, pillowcase and try to throw it all down at one time. Bad idea. But I thought it might be interesting to talk about this and to see where your head is at. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> the Tom Likas show with shorter commercial breaks than ever. Did you hear how short that one was? It's three minutes of change. Are you kidding me? How do they do it? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Well, it's been a little while since I talked to you, but uh, basically, man, first, I, I love the way you introduced yourself to saying, basically saying, Hey, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just a fool with a microphone on the radio and I love that. But, uh, I gotta say, you're, you're just right on everything, everything you're talking about. You know, I, I mean, I lost probably about two or three grand so far in stocks. You can't sell them because it's just gonna, everything's gonna get worse. Everybody's gonna get so much worse. And, um, you know, man, I mean, I, I also got, just gotta say, I, you know, I don't always agree with you coming to sign, but I think right now you are straight up right on. And, um, yeah, that's about it. You know, by the by the way, you know if if you're selling, take a look at uh, what happened today. Uh, all of a sudden, all these vultures came in and started buying. Oh yeah, well that's the, that's the thing. Honestly, what I what I wanted to do is when uh, when the market was up, I kind of missed the peak. I was planning on selling about three or four months ago, and if I did that, I would have just put that money into a mutual fund. And right now, I would have bought every single piece of stock that I could. Because all it's going to do is it's going to shoot right back up. You know, eventually it might take a while, but, you know, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, so, I mean, it really, just exactly what you're saying. People people just got to hold on to what they have. Just, you know, keep in there. And just don't, you know, don't freak out. Don't do anything crazy. And just, you know, eventually it'll, it'll kind of go back up. That's what's going to happen. And not only that, but to have a game plan where you're still putting money in now. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm still still doing my. I mean, I've got my my benefits at work. Still putting into my 401k. Still putting, you know, about a 
a little bit of money every every month into a savings account that I use, budgeting everything. It's you know, you gotta you gotta just keep going with going with what you got. That's exactly what you got to do. Jason, thank you so much for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Bill on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom. I have a few things for you. Uh, first of all, with the, I, I believe you're talking about 401Ks right now, and I apologize. I just got in my car. Um, well, I'm talking about all retirement accounts. Right. Okay. With the 401, I, I, people are getting out of them right now, from what I understand. And to me... Why would you do that if if the prices are dropping? I know people are losing money, but for those people that are retiring, those are the only ones I can see panicking right now. If not, why would you? I, I would increase it. You would increase spending. I would increase the amount that I'm contributing to my 401. Well, I understand that you 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 think that's a good idea, but here's the problem: What happens if the market goes down further? Yeah, which it probably will, but um. I'm ta I'm speaking long term. I mean, I got another 20 years till I retire. Right. But the, the point is what they always say is true. You can't time the market. Correct. You don't know if this is the good time to be putting more money in or not. But you don't suggest dropping out completely though. Either. No, I don't suggest dropping out at all. I just don't suggest saying, "Hey, I got a few thousand bucks stash. I'm just going to put everything I have in now because it's so low." I'm trying to make sure people don't do that because that's also a bad idea. Right, I agree with that. I have another thing for you, Tom, and this is based on a couple uh, shows ago. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you made the statement that we cannot um, lower taxes without – I'm sorry, can't raise taxes. No, let me get this right. Lower taxes without um, reducing spending. Correct. Okay, now I brought that statement up to a, a friend at work who's a staunch Republican. He said this, that with when we do um, cut taxes, the tax, I'm sorry, yeah, cut taxes, the tax revenue actually goes up. Well, the tax revenue goes up, but not as much as the spending goes up. <laughs> right. Um, because if that were true, why do we have a bigger budget budget deficit today than we had eight years ago? Right, and that's what I'm looking for, some ammunition to shoot back to them, because, you know... It, it, does, they, it does not matter how much tax revenue is generated. What matters is closing the budget deficit and not increasing the national debt. Makes sense to me, Tom. On top of that, uh, when you go to war, there was a time in this country where the president had to go on the radio before television, had to speak before the nation and say, you know, we're getting involved in World War II. And that means we're going to be selling bonds, we're going to be raising taxes, we're going to pay for this war. Now this idea that you can go to war and cut taxes is, there's a whole generation of people who've grown up hearing this, and it's just wrong. Right. Well, of course, our current president's very arrogant and just does things however he... Well, you know, we have to insist that if somebody wants to go to war, they have to tell how they're going to pay for it first. And that doesn't mean you're going to figure it out later or you're going to figure it out in the next administration. No, no. You figure it out today. Right on. Okay, Tom, take me out. Thank you very much. There you go, Bill. You just said take me out. So I did. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Ariel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tom. It's Ariel. Oh, Ariel. Yeah, I have a um, question for you. All right. I I have um, uh, my kids is at the college funds through the bank through Washington Mutual, which used to be, who have the stock options as they I think it's called a five hundred eight. Five hundred eight um, or a five twenty nine. I'm not an accountant, so I, I don't know. But all right, it's a, it's an account. You're putting away money for your kids' college. Right, and it's based on the market because it's it's basically this guy who runs the, the thing. He's a, a mutual fund dude who manages it, the portfolios. Do I just leave that alone? Do you know what mutual fund it is? There's a bunch of different ones. Did you ever bother to learn what they are? No, that's what I pay him to do. No, 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 no. <laughs> you pay him to help you pick the mutual funds. Okay. That doesn't mean you pay him to know what you've invested in. Right, so I need to read this thing a little better. Uh, you, you need to know them cold, honey. 
I mean, the fact is, there's 14,000, that last count, last time I saw a number, 14,000 mutual funds. So theoretically, your guy is helping you pick mutual funds. Right. By the way, uh, do you know if you paid a commission when you bought those mutual funds? Uh, not, not much of one. I didn't ask how much of one. I said, do you know if you paid one? Yes, I did. How much? Um, it depended on the amount that I was putting out every month. No, 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 darling. It's a percentage. That's right. What's the percentage? I don't know. Dear, you, you have really just tried to set this on remote control, and it can't be done. Yeah, you're right. I screwed up. Well, now you need to find out what you own. And by the way, you shouldn't be paying those fees. Banks are not brokerage houses. They are not financial advisors. If Washington Mutual knew so much about investing, they wouldn't be broke today. That's what I'm worried about. Well, it's something to think about. Well, thank you so much. There's other places you can put that money, dear. Yeah, where? Uh, well, a examples of places you could go. Uh, my favorite, and they do not advertise uh, on radio shows like this one, and, and certainly definitely not on ours, uh, the Vanguard Group, which has the lowest fees of almost anybody. Um, also, uh, Fidelity with fees not quite as low as Vanguard. T. Rowe Price. Ever heard of these places? Yeah, actually, one of them is Vanguard. No, no, one of the mutual funds is Vanguard. Yes, yes, it is. And if you paid a commission to invest in a Vanguard fund, you got rooked. Yeah. Rooked. Because Vanguard doesn't charge commission. No, they don't. So you got rooked. I gotta go kick some ass. You have to go kick some ass. Step one is, at the very least, find out how many funds you have, get the ticker symbols, and look them up online and find out what you're invested in. Okay. Because you can take those mutual funds exactly as they are and transfer them to a place like Vanguard or Fidelity. You Good. just transfer them over. I will. I'll transfer over. And then you're not paying those fees anymore. Damn straight. What are you paying the fee for? I don't know. It was just part of the... The guy time. already picked the mutual fund for you. I mean, what are you paying for now? I was thinking paperwork. I it's an annuity for him. Yeah, it is, to pay for his kid's college fund. Right. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> so I'm going to put him in a chokehold and see if he can get himself out of this one. Good luck, dear. Thank you so much for your advice. I'm here to help. Okay, we need to work on a Flash Friday for women. It is for women. Take no, 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 your, take, take your top off. Well, first you have to build a car with a window that goes down to your butt. <laughs> hey, guys, I've seen guys pull things out. <laughs> Is that so? Yes, that's so. Look at you. <laughs> Saving for your kids' college education and watching guys pulling out their wee-wee. Wow. Yeah. Tell them to swing it around a while. <laughs> Thank you, darling. 1-800-5800-TOMS. You want your kids to get a good education. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Rich on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's up? Uh, I'm 19. I go to Cal State Fullerton. Um, I've been saving my money for a while now, and I want to start investing, but I know absolutely nothing about the stock markets or anything like that, so I was hoping you can give me some pointers on well, it. Well, your first investment is in Visa and MasterCard. I don't mean the stocks. I mean the cards, the balances. Uh, are you at a zero balance on all your credit cards? You have no debt? Yes, I've never had a credit card. So you have no debts? No. You have college loans, don't you? Uh, well, actually, my parents are paying for it. Well, that's pretty good. How about a car loan? Nope. All right. Very nice. Uh, then what you want to do is you want to uh, pick one of these companies like I mentioned. And there's there's a bunch of good ones. Charles Schwab is good. The Vanguard Group is good. Fidelity Investments is good. TIAA Cref which is the weirdest name of a company I've ever heard of. Uh, they are good and cheap also. You want to pay as few uh, fees as possible. And what you want to do is you want to pick 
How much money are we talking about investing? Uh, well, I have a thousand bucks saved up right now. So, All right. well, you know, the, the bottom line is, a thousand bucks gets you maybe into one mutual fund. Right. So what you want to do is you want to pick something that's right in the middle somewhere. And you don't want to put the whole thousand in at one time if, if, if you find a fund that lets you take less than a thousand as the minimum. Okay. Um, how long would it take for me to like actually start making money? Like if I invested in a well, mutual fund? Well, forget about it. You, first of all, that, that mentality you have to throw right out the window. Okay. This is not a roulette, uh, there's not a roulette wheel. This is not a, a one arm bandit. Right. You are building wealth over your lifetime. If your idea is to invest a thousand today to make a hundred dollars profit tomorrow, get out. <laughs> this is okay. not the place to go. Go to a casino. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not too lucky at casinos. Well, th but the point is, you're going to be even less lucky in the stock market with that mentality. Right. Okay. So just uh, invest for the long term and and do a mutual fund. Yeah. And uh, Vanguard has something called the uh, S&P Index, the S&P 500 Index. Okay. There's a good one. Uh, very low fees. Very, I mean, there's no load, no commission. Very low expense ratio. I mean, one of the cheapest mutual funds you can buy. And they also have something called the Total Stock Market Index, which is broader than the S&P 500. Uh, it uh, invests across stocks of small, mid-cap, and large-cap uh, uh, size. So there are small, medium, and large companies. Right. And, okay. but, hey, but well, what I would do is you put the minimum amount you can get away with putting in, mm -hmm. and then put a certain amount per month you're comfortable putting in the same amount. They may have a certain minimum, uh, for making that automatic investment. Well, but just put in the same amount every month. Right. Don't dump the whole amount in now. Okay. All right. Hey, well, sounds good, Tom. Thanks a lot. Um, I'll take your advice and see how it goes. Good luck. Hey, can you kick me out, Kobe style? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. The stock market of 900 points today. Eddie, hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going okay. Good. I'm glad I'm on the air. Uh, sorry about the background noise. I'm actually walking through downtown to my car. And uh, anyhow, uh, it's just amazing to me how the stock market in one day can just shoot up about 900 points. And I was wondering if you can give me some advice to kind of cash in on the whole. No, you can't. <laughs> because nobody knew the market was going up 900 points today. Not me, not anybody. Right. So the answer is you can't. The best thing you can do is now that the market is down, start your investment plan. Okay. And that does not mean... Oh, by the way, have you paid all your debts? I have not. I do have a couple of debts pending. Well, that's your first investment. What's that? That's your first investment. God, it's invest in my debts, pay them off, and once I get that secured, I can, you're saying I can uh, invest in kind of like um, mutual bonds, maybe? Is that what you're saying? Mutual thinking? funds. Sorry, mutual funds, that's right. Right, but that's once you are debt free. Got it. Hey, Tom, listen, I'm a huge fan. I just like to thank you for conducting a public service. You're a very articulate, articulate kind of guy. I, I listen to you every day. Uh, Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. I'm walking up a hill. But, That's okay. Uh, I work for the county courthouse, and uh, pretty much I do data entry all day. So I just slap on the earphones, and I'm just so happy I can hear you all at work. Uh, and it's just amazing to me how you are so aware of what's going on and the amount of ignorance that's out there of people that have called in that, that just are not aware 
You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, and I thank you for the call. Shahab on the Tom Likas Show, hello. How are you doing, Tom? Doing great. Um, so here's my, uh, my little situation. Uh, I'm uh, graduating college right now. Um, I uh, broke into the field of private equity a while ago, um, and, uh, you know, the financial downturn, um, the salary I was looking at getting with the field itself, you know, drastically was cut. I actually had to leave the field because um, it's not something that, you know, I wanted to spend all my college and then earn a very small salary toward doing until, you know, the financial world kind of gets back on its feet for, you know, the type of job I was doing. Um, the decision I made, you know, along you know, with my family and all that was I think I'm going to attempt, you know, law school, get into the legal contract end of things. But that's not going to be coming around for um, another year, year and a half or so. And I was wondering, do you have any advice using my current skill set? And I can tell you what that is if you want to know. Um, I needed some kind of job to, you know, hold me over for that year, year and a half where I feel that I'd be not only productive, but, uh, you know, I can. Uh, Am I to assume you do not have a college degree? I do have a college degree. What is it in? Business economics. All right. So you want something to hold you over? Why did you get out of the field? I don't understand. Um, because the the field that it was in, it was a private equity. It was uh, I was uh, in the uh, business of raising money for hedge funds. Right. And in uh, in the current market, the way that it is right now is um, drastically difficult um, to get the monies up and running, to get the funds up and running for these funds. So. Um, you know, of course, the business I was working for was an up-and-coming company. It was really hurting really badly. Um, so I decided that it would be in the best interest for myself to get into some sort of legal field because I'm very well-versed and very well-spoken. I'm a, uh, I'm a good, uh, well-spoken person. I, I have a good presence for situations to get into the field of law. So by the time, you know, 08, end of, uh, uh, end of 09, you know, the recession kind of picking in the global economy picks up to the level it used to be, I would not only have a business economics degree, but I'd also have a law degree to back it up. So any type of field I could get into deeper on would be double backed with two degrees and it would, you know, help me financially earn a, a top level wage. Well, uh, this is not a good time to be looking for a new field. Uh, frankly, companies are laying off, just simply firing people at a rapid clip. No, I, I understand you 100%. I'm not really looking for a new field, per se. I'm just kind of looking for ideas. Just a, no, but wait, you're talking about a high-paying field, and what I'm trying to tell you is all companies are doing are laying people off. Right, but th for this year, year and a half, I don't need to be in a high-paying field. I just okay. need something like a $20, $25 an hour job to hold me over before I break into, you know, finishing, you know, my LSAT. Oh, my God, uh, uh, you know, uh, working the register at Ralph's pays $20 an hour. Is it really? Yeah, and it's mindless. Wow, well, that would that kind of hurt my, uh, you know, mental state. I think my parents would be a little mad. They, you know, put out all that money for college, and it's well, maybe worth that, it. Uh, Twenty dollars an hour is eight hundred dollars a week. It's not a lot of money. No, you're hundred percent right. Hundred percent. Twenty dollars an hour sounds like a lot more than it is. Yeah, I. Yeah, no, you're. I, I understand. I, I, you know, I get it with you know the taxes and the situations. I'm, I'm kind of young, so I don't have anything to really write off right now. So I kind of take the the full grunt of the taxes on that. And um, I just, I'm kind of lost right now, Tom. You know, I, I don't know what to do before I, I kind of change my career. Uh, I really, you know, I really... Well, maybe I, what I, you want to do is get an advanced degree of some kind, like a master's degree or something. Um, it's in the progress. I kind of wanted to do a JD, uh, MBA, you know, kind of get it all at once. Well, maybe a, maybe a good time to get yourself some kind of advanced degree. i got to move on, but I thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, from Philadelphia, listening to our online stream, this is on, on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Thank you. Um, I have uh, questions. Um, earlier, I, I didn't quite hear what you were saying about the... Um, no fees on the uh, on investments. Um, I have some 401ks with a bank, uh, local bank, um, and IRAs and things like that. Um, I'm paying a fee uh, for it, um, thinking that what can I do or who can I uh, go to uh, to uh, invest and reduce the fee. Well, I named all the places before. <sighs> I'm um, so sorry. Van By the way, how big is your balance? The total of all your accounts? Um, some. Somewhere around 100, 120. If you had that money at Vanguard, you wouldn't be paying a penny. <sighs> okay. Period. Um, and the, the other things that uh, also the investment um, bankers are saying that, I mean, the, for the uh, turbulent time that we have right now, and he's saying that stay the course, 
And yes, but you could stay the course at a place that doesn't charge you five percent. Okay. No, but I mean, I already purchased the. Um, I already purchased the fund. So if I sell it, wouldn't I be at a loss, or how does that go? Uh, you know, you're not selling it. You're going to transfer your assets. And, okay. and if you go to Vanguard or Fidelity or one of those places, they'll show you how to do it. Okay. So you're okay. not going to sell anything. Okay. You get a transfer of assets for them, and you transfer it over. And I wouldn't I wouldn't be charged for anything like that. So. I don't know what your place charges now, but the new place won't charge you if it's Vanguard. Well, I mean, when I when I purchase it, it's charged five percent. And I mean, I, yeah, that's, that's but that, the point is you've already paid the five percent, right? Now, some funds, and you have to check, some of them have transaction fees, or some of them have uh, redemption fees. But you're not re you're not redeeming anything. All you're doing is transferring where the funds are held. Okay. And you're going to send them all over to a place that doesn't charge fees, like Vanguard. Okay. All right. Sounds great. And is there something that you could recommend? I mean, like right now, I have a rental property that I gain a little bit of money. And for those little money, I want to put it right into the investment. Is that something I can do um, or a fund that uh, that I you could recommend? A fund that I can recommend that you can put more in? But all the funds are like that. Okay. Okay. Well, that sounds good. But you get out. if you're in a bank and you're paying a fee, get out. Okay. All right, that sounds great. But well, don't you. sell anything. Don't take your money physically out of the bank. Just simply transfer your assets to another company. And again, I'm using Vanguard as an example. There are several good ones. And Vanguard just happens to be the cheapest one I can name off the top of my head. Well, I mean, you know, a couple of weeks ago when that, you know, up and downs and things like that, and I was looking at the statement, I was saying, thinking that perhaps maybe, I, you know, instead of staying where I'm at, and changing it to a bond, but, I mean, I don't know if that's the right thing to do either. Well, that that's something between you and an investment advisor, but what I'm telling you to do is, step one, save yourself 5% a year. Okay. Then, right. you can, then you can decide what you're going to do with your investments, okay? Good luck with that, On. I appreciate the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1 800 5800 tom 1 800 5800 The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show, the only afternoon talk show that couldn't care less if our children are taught gay marriage in school. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. <laughs> We're talking about, among other things, the stock market up nine hundred points today. I know everybody is flipping out again. Let's say hi here to Andre on the Tom Likas show. What's up, Tom? Not much, Andre. Okay, uh, about two years ago when I started my company, uh, got it. I don't, I'm not too good with stocks or anything, so I asked my my father to give me advice on uh, how much to put into my 401k. He told me he put he put it down. He put 18 percent. In about two years, I didn't even pay attention. I made about 40 42 grand. Um, recently I took half of it out uh, to get a car. Why'd you do that? Uh, I need, I needed, I needed a car to get but the, to work. Well then, but the point is, you shouldn't have put that much money in in the first place. I shouldn't have. I mean, why? Why didn't you think ahead? As far as putting eighteen percent to my four hundred one k. Not just that. Uh, you should only have put in enough. But it's retirement money. This is right. money you're not supposed to see again until you are retired. Right. Well, how much? Okay. How much money did you withdraw? I I, w I took out twenty. I'm only twenty thousand. I'm, I'm, I'm only allowed to take out half at a you time. You took out twenty thousand. Right. And when they were done deducting taxes and penalties and fees, how much did you get out of twenty thousand? No, I, I got the full 20. Basically, I get my 20 Gs. How much did you have to withdraw to get 20,000? I didn't have... I, my, I took 20,000 out of my own son, money. Son, son. Yes. Hey, are we talking about your 401k? Is that what you're talking about? Right, right. 401k is a retirement account. Right. If you take money out of your 401k, they charge you a penalty and fees. 
Well, basically, I'm paying my own money back because it's it's my money that so I. So you borrowed I, it from your four hundred one k. I'm sorry. You took out a loan. Right, a loan. Exactly, it was a loan. I'm sorry. So I took out a loan. And so I'm, you didn't take out any of your money. Uh, as far as I know, it's it's my money because if you if, didn't if, take it out. Okay, so you I, got I, a loan, right, son? You got a loan. Okay. The money in your 401k is like, it's like a lien. When they put a lien against your car, you own the car, but you actually also owe money to the loan company. Right. So you own the car, but you don't own the car. This this money is a loan. Right. So, But if something was to happen, they would just take it out of my 401k, 401k That right? If you didn't pay it back, they'd take your 401k money. That's right. Right. Okay. Well, basically, I when I did that, Things weren't working out. I wasn't getting enough money on every weekend, so I lowered my my 401k. The percentage I was putting in, I'm only putting in two percent now. And then I looked at recently. I don't, I don't really pay attention to it, but recently I looked into it and I, I lost about six thousand dollars. And I'm just I know, I'm wanting to put like at least fifteen percent again because. I mean, the money that I have... Why do you keep raising and lowering the amount you're putting in? Can't you find an average that works for your budget? Well, that's... that. Right now, the, the, the what I got right now, it, it works for my budget. Then leave it at that and don't change it anymore. At, at 2%, but then... Whatever. I mean, Pick a number that's never going to change. Ever. Until you are retired. Okay. What number would that be? Somewhere between two and fifteen. Well, see, in in, a, in about four or five months, I'm a, I'm done paying my loan, and and I'm gonna start getting you know. Pick a number that's gonna stay with you until retirement. Look, did you call for advice? You called to argue with me. No, I, I call for advice. I'm telling you what to do now. Do it. All righty. Thanks. Yeah. Freaking guy calls me for advice, and then he's he's arguing with me. You either don't take my advice, but then call another show. Don't call a radio station. Hang up. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Michael on the Tom Likas show. <laughs> hello, Tom. How are you doing? I'm today, okay. <laughs> Listen, I'll take a lot short time. I've heard you talk about uh, mutual funds, and I wanted to kind of maybe uh, enlighten you about something that you may not have th thought about that are a hell of a lot better than uh, mutual funds, and those are extended traded funds. They are traded similar to indexes, but they're, they are actually bundles of stocks that are that are are in different sectors of the uh, uh, of the economy. For example, currency market, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, um, uh, banking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now, there the, are already mutual funds that do that. Uh, well, the difference is, is that with mutual funds that do that is that you're paying, you're getting around about ninety two cents on the dollar. Second of all is that you have tax consequences. With ETFs, you do not have that. What you're doing is that, you know, you can go and hold, you can go and put, and also you can put all... I think ETFs are a great idea. Uh, and and, and I, have, I have, yes, exchange-traded funds. I've used them, uh, ETFs. The problem is I don't think the average person knows enough about the stock market. Well, they don't necessarily have to know a lot about the stock well, market. I think it's, they do. I think they need more knowledge. That You hear the level of knowledge uh, on that last call. If I started talking ETFs to that guy, he'd go blind. That's true. Now, that's true. Now, the, the thing is, is that, you know, I think that, the, unfortunately, is that a lot of people go to the stockbrokers or, or bankers, and they're basically looking for a commission. And they could give. A but you know, you know that stockbrokers get a commission even when they're selling ETFs. Uh, they get it, but it's a heck of a lot smaller uh, than you are than than you're paying on uh, uh, a mutual fund. Also, that they have recurrent fees that come to them by in, in way of the back door from uh, the, the from the. Uh, if you pick the wrong fund. It, that the big the question is the big if though. Right, and see well. that. That's why I'm saying I've also recommended that people go to Morningstar uh, and use their website and drill down and not uh, not buy mutual funds that charge a load, not buy mutual funds that charge a 12B1 fee. I mean, there's ways to do this. 
Yes, it's, a, it's quite a bit of a, a, a landmines out there, too. But the, when, when you look at the rate of return, and you do not have to go and sell the ETFs, you can go and trade the ETFs, and also you can get a leverage on there that it's a heck of a lot more powerful. Yeah, all of what you're saying is true, and I don't disagree with it. But okay. I'm, what I'm telling you is you have to give advice that fits the intellect and the experience of the person who's asking. Okay, I understand. I and what understand. you're suggesting is much more sophisticated than the average caller uh, is going to be able to accept. Okay. And okay. my fear is that people are going to start, because as it is, their biggest uh, tendency is to use Wall Street like a casino. <laughs> and the minute you tell them they can uh, buy a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one, leverage this, leverage that, all they see is, is being uh, in there with, with a stack of chips. Right. No, I understand what you're saying. I understand. Well, okay. By the way, but for the record, you're right. I, yeah. I, t I under See, I understand what you're talking about and agree with it. But I don't think the last caller would understand what you were talking about. No, they, yeah, they, I, I think that a lot of the traders, they, they, I mean, not traders, I don't mean to say traders, a lot of the callers calling up, they're kind of like looking at you as though that, you know, you're going to lead them down the way that they don't have to think, they don't have to do anything, they just have to act as though that, that they're a automaton and just do exactly what you say. Well, some of them need to do exactly what I say because, uh, honestly, <laughs> uh, they're being directed by salespeople and brokers and other people uh, who have a vested interest in getting them. I have no vested interest in this. Uh, we don't have any advertisers who are brokers, mutual fund companies. Uh, nobody's paying me a penny to do this. And, and so I, I think it's more important that people get their advice from a dispassionate observer than from somebody who has a vested interest by selling something. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. It's Gil on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Professor. Hey. Hey, Professor, I wanted to make a comment. You touched on taxes earlier, and uh, my comment was pretty much, uh, what do you think about uh, Republicans always running on lowering taxes, but when, uh, when they are in charge of the budget, they run it deeply into the red because they want the benefits of the, that taxes create, but they don't want to... They don't want to deal with that. Well, on top of that, uh, that allows them to portray Democrats as spenders because uh, or tax and spenders because it's the Democrats who have to clean up the mess after the Republicans are done, which is what Barack Obama's going to have to do, and they're going to call him a tax and spender. Our email address, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.